Welcome back gamers to Top 10 Gaming. I'm your host Johnny Rogers and if you happen to be new here we put out daily content on all things gaming related so if you're down with that then I got two words for you. Smash subscribe. Plus leave us a comment down below with which new video game has let you down the most. While you ponder that let's jump right into today's list of the top 10 disastrous game launches we'll never forget. And at number 10, SimCity. SimCity for the most part has had a fairly successful run that is until the 2013 launch of their sixth major release. This highly anticipated game was meant to be the reboot of the supremely popular SimCity 4. However, with the times changing, EA knew that they would need to follow the trends and place their efforts for this game on its online connections. This is where absolute disaster struck for them amongst fans. Once the game launched due to the overwhelming popularity, it didn't take long for the game servers to buckle under the pressure. Amazon even yanked the game from their site after it received over a thousand one star reviews. EA also had a bad reputation when it comes to listening to their customers and for the most part stayed true to this by refusing tons of requested refunds. They even went as far as banning some users who had the audacity of trying to return the game. After so much flack from fans, EA straight up put a stop to any and all marketing for this game. And at number 9, The War Z. Now I should mention it was formerly known as The War Z before changing their title's name to Infestation Survivor Stories. The game was an open world zombie video game developed by Hammerpoint Interactive where players endure the fallout of a post apocalyptic world filled with zombies. Sounds pretty cool right? Well this was the lie that gamers were sold and when it was finally released on Steam many hyped up fans were immediately disappointed. The company had advertised a game that was nowhere near completion upon its release. They literally put out just the bare foundation for the game which prompted many to accuse them of committing fraud. It would have been enough of a disaster from this one misstep but the lies didn't stop there. Their 100 player servers, skill point leveling system and large in game worlds also turned out to be pipe dreams. Head of development Sergei Titov also claimed that the first map was over 100 square kilometers but upon further inspection it turned out to be 10 square kilometers. Plus much like SimCity. Anyone who criticized the game was immediately banned. In at number 8, Battlefield 4. For those of you who don't know, Battlefield 4 is a first person shooter game developed by EA DICE and for the most part was criticized for its very shallow campaign mode. Not to mention it was plagued from day one with numerous glitches, bugs and very brief single player action. For the most part, Battlefield ended up doing quite well in sales but due to it being one of the first games for the next gen consoles, it took a while for people to kind of warm up to it. The single player mode as we mentioned was absolutely horrible. It would randomly delete what little progress you had made and during online matches players were reporting a high number of connection dropouts. Thankfully EA took the criticism head on and admitted that the entire game was unacceptable at the time of its release. But they still released it cause you gotta make that money. And at number 7, Half Life 2. Developed and published by the Valve Corporation, this first person shooter was the long awaited sequel to their 1998 first release of the series. At the time Valve was testing out their industry game changer Steam and Half Life 2 was meant to show off how great it was. It still is regarded as one of the greats even though its launch was an absolute unforgettable disaster. At the time the only way you could download a game on Steam was to enter a code for the game upon purchase. However for many eager fans they were filled with frustration when the client wouldn't validate their codes for the game. Again this was due to the overwhelming rush of people all trying to get on the same servers causing many of Steam's features to just crash all at once. In at number 6, Sega Saturn. I know some of you may be too young to remember this but let's hop in a time machine and go back to 1995 where the hottest new console was the Sega Saturn. When it came time for the very first E3 event, fans were hyped about this new Sega console and at the event you had their American president Tom Kalinske taking the stage with such a happy demeanor you'd swear he had just won the lottery. Leading up to E3, Sega of America had been advertising its release date by calling it Saturn Day. Not joking, puns were cool back then. Tom then proceeded to stick his foot in his mouth when he told the audience that it was all a hoax and that the console was already available in stores. Uh, come again? Apparently behind the scenes Sega had struck a deal with Toys R Us and already started selling the console. Not only did this make the crowd want to run out of the conference ASAP, it 
really angered developers who were planning to release their games come launch day or Saturn day as it was called. Ultimately the console flopped and the space on the shelf for retailers left out of this deal went right to PlayStation. We all know how that turned out. In at number five, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. Developed by Robomoto and Disruptive Games and published by Activision, the 2015 release of the fifth game in this series was rushed into quite the disastrous game launch. Due to an expiring licensing deal with Tony Hawk and Activision, the devs quickly threw together this game within a few months and actually released it unfinished. It soon became a commercial failure and was actually described as one of the worst video games of all time. The game was so bad it looked as though an indie developer followed the dummy's guide for creating a Tony Hawk game. The game had promised consumers that it would be going back to its roots with this one, but everything about the game looked awful. Eventually they released a whopping 8 gigabyte patch that added in more levels and skaters, but there's no way fans were forgetting the trap that they fell into on this one. In at number 4, Wii U. We would be hard pressed just to bash the Sega flop without mentioning that its rival Nintendo didn't have the best experience with launching consoles as well. The arrival of the Wii U was nothing short of catastrophic. Much like the release of the Sega Saturn, Nintendo made false promises about what would be included with their Wii U while rushing the assembly lines to crank out consoles in time for the Christmas season. Their master plan was to sell the shell of the console and force gamers to download a day one patch that would update the system with the features that they had advertised. Consumers were were made aware that there would be a patch to improve the system on day one, but what they weren't prepared for was the literal hours upon hours that it took to do so. Plus with so many people attempting to do this all on the first day, many of the servers crashed from being overloaded and unprepared. What the company also failed to mention was that if for whatever reason your console turned off midway through downloading the patch, it would brick your system making it essentially a really expensive piece of plastic. In at number 3, Goddess. Developed by the independent company 22 Cans, this video game was described as the spiritual successor to Populous. Its God Simulator status was extremely promising as its creator Peter Molyneux vaguely boasted about its focus on power and responsibility. In reality, Peter never really cared about this game at all. As soon as it was launched in early access, Molyneux just moseyed on over to other projects, leaving Goddess behind like an unfinished art project. The main promise of this mobile game was that if you somehow were able to solve it, you too would become a God and actually share some of the profits made in real life. Well, when 18 year old Brian Henderson completed the game and received a video of Peter promising untold riches, he was excited to say the least. However, his 21st birthday crept up and still he had heard no response from 22 Cants. And after playing the game for three straight hours and years going by, he finally met the developers who rewarded him by just getting drunk together at a pub in Edinburgh. Not exactly untold riches. In at number two, Diablo Immortal. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones. Phone. Right? Why they would think a Q&A would be smart after receiving zero applause on this release is beyond me. However, my favorite question was the guy who asked if this was an out of season April Fool's joke, which is really what it felt like to be honest. Diablo Immortal was a highly anticipated game that putting it strictly on Android and iOS was a huge slap in the face to their fan base. Especially after the server mess that was Diablo 3, fans were actually rooting for Blizzard at the time to save themselves from their last failure. This move from PC to smartphone was one that completely divided their fans and sent the internet into a meme fueled uproar. Again, it was the fact that the trailers leading up to this launch were teasing what appeared to be another PC or perhaps console release. Nope. What, you guys don't have phones? You guys don't have phones? Look at guys, get it together. Last but not least in our number one spot, Anthem. All right, you know, we, we've learned a lot of lessons over the last four months, I think. One of the most important ones was just around listening to player feedback better. Sure. Uh, and so we, we spent some time. Game reviewer Sam Loveridge from Games Radar gave Anthem a staggering 2.5 out of 5 stars and stated that Anthem is ultimately severely flawed and very unfinished, adding, there's a half good game in there, but it doesn't do enough to diminish the overall feeling of emptiness and repetition. 
Ouch! This was by far the biggest disaster when it came to game launches in recent memory. Not only did they change the name of the game from Beyond to Anthem at the final hour before E3, but a lot of the features they had promised in 2012 weren't even implemented until the last months of production. Whenever this happens, it's just a recipe for disaster and truly one that the gaming world will never let them live down. R.I.P. Blizzard, we miss you. And that has been the top 10 disastrous game launches we'll never forget. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, show us some love by tapping that like and subscribe button. Plus, let us know down in the comments below your thoughts on this list. And for more videos like this one, all you gotta do is click that playlist on the screen. From Top 10 Gaming, I'm Johnny Rogers. Until next time, take care.